Hello and welcome to Morning Prayer for Sunday, August 23rd. Today is the 12th Sunday after the Pentecost. As we move towards the options for in-person and live stream worship next week, I wish to take this moment to thank Hunter Phillips, a parishioner and college student who has graciously offered his time and talent to produce our morning prayer videos for the last eight weeks or so. We have come together now in our homes and in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth God's praise, to hear the Holy Word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. We pray for the church and for the world, for those who bear the authority and responsibility of government in this and every land, and for those for whom our prayers have been requested. For Nancy, Steve, Bob, Rick, Jean, Adele, Joan, Tom, Ginger, Dean, Frank, Jana and Bob, Barbara, Donna, Kathleen, Madeline, Matthew, Debbie, Bill, Beth, Doug, Emily, Sandy, Judy, Heather and Neville, Charles, Maria, Christine, Adam, Pam, Jewel, Benjamin, and Tim. We pray for those who have died, especially Andy and Betty, and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Now let us give thanks to God, who has made us worthy to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Behold, the dwelling of God is with mortals. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself will be with them, and be their God. O Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Yeah. 
thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord. When they have heard the words of your mouth, they will sing of the ways of the Lord, that the great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save thee. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O oh, Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations. And your wonders among all people. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you. And your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples. To the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. By the mercies of God, present yourselves as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God. This is your spiritual worship. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, it might make me unpopular in certain circles, but, frankly, after so many years in church leadership, my calluses are pretty well formed. But I love St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Why do I love it? Because in the letter to the Romans, we encounter all the great truths of the Christian faith. We hear about Christ, fully God and fully human, whose death on the cross atoned for the sins of the world and whose resurrection transforms our hearts. We hear the truth about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. For Paul, 
the floodgates are opened and the Spirit comes rushing into our lives. The Spirit transforms us. It changes us. The Spirit assures us that we are children of God, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. In the letter to the Romans, we hear the truth about God's grace, that all of its benefits are freely given, and that our names were written in the book of life even before the world began. Like birth itself, the rain and the sunshine, God's amazing grace is a pure gift to us, given to us freely. We hear the truth that we are called to have faith in Christ, Trust God's goodness like Abraham trusted the promises of God. So also we are to trust the great promises of God for eternal life and divine forgiveness. I like the book of Romans because I hear not the stories, but the great truths of the Christian faith. Since all have sinned and fallen short, of the glory of God, we are now justified by God's grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Romans 3, 23. We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Romans 5, 3. Romans 8, 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? Romans 8, 38. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ our Lord. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Romans 12, 9. And the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 15, 13. Why do I like the letter to the Romans? Because Paul focuses on doctrine rather than history. With the Apostle Paul, we hear of no history of the life of Christ. No parables, no miracles, no nativity stories, no Good Friday stories, no resurrection stories. There's no debate over symbolism or literalism or allegory or fact. There's no debate over, over whether this Greek word means this in this pericope or this Greek word means that in pericope. There's no debate over whether one theologian thinks it's heretical and another one doesn't. Instead, we hear the gospel preached, written and shared for all all to read. We hear the good news that God raised Jesus from the dead. With Paul, we don't get lost in details. We hear the gospel and then are encouraged, implored to live according to that good news of Jesus. That is why he wrote those letters. First doctrine, then deeds. First beliefs, then behaviors. First grace, then goodness. First Christ, then character. And the behaviors are always rooted in the beliefs. Goodness grows from grace. Character grows from Christ. Today, we hear Paul encourage us to give ourselves as a living offering to God. And this, he says, is holiness, is our spiritual worship, our true worship of God. 
to give ourselves as an offering, to give our lives, to give all that we have and all that we are, and turn it over to God. All the great people of the world have discovered that secret, to give oneself away in love. As the presiding bishop reminds us, if it is not of love, it is not of God. And walking in the way of Christ means walking in the way of love. So we ask the question, what does it mean to be of Christ in the world today? We are the flesh of Christ. We are the body of Christ in the world. We are the eyes of Christ, and you see the work of God around us. We are the ears of Christ, and you hear the sounds of Christ all around us. We are the mouth of Christ, and we speak the words of Christ's compassion to those around us. We are the heart of Christ, and we share the emotions of Christ with all whom we meet. We are the hands of Christ, and we stretch out our hands, which is Christ's hands, to help others. We are the legs of Christ, and those legs carry us to those in need. We are the feet of Christ, and we help others to walk in Christ's way. Yes, you are literally and symbolically the body of Christ in the world. We are Eucharist to the world. We are living sacrifices. We are spiritual offerings. Martin Luther said that we are little Christs. That people see in our lives a little piece of Jesus the Christ. As the song says, they'll know we are Christians by our love. The church is the body of Christ in the world today. Whether in person, gathered around a table or not, or gathered in a Zoom room or on Facebook Live. Our true worship, the true power of our faith, is not that God offers us anything, but that we offer ourselves as God's love in human form on the altar of the world. This is our spiritual worship of the one from whose love we are never separated. Amen.
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.